Welcome to the Sun River Anglers Fly Tying Corner, where each month we bring you a new fly pattern to give a try to on our Central Oregon lakes and rivers. In addition to showing you how to tie each pattern, I'll feature fishing technique tips and tricks, and I'll cover some of the entomology behind each pattern to help gain a better understanding of the bugs that we're trying to imitate. I have field tested each of the patterns that I feature each month to make sure that they catch fish. I'll cover tying instructions for the fly as well as materials to help you be able to recreate these patterns on your own vise. For this month's pattern, I'm going to tie a red flashback pheasant tail. This is a fly I discovered some years ago at the Hook Fly Shop here in Sun River, and I've used it extensively through um, many of our area lakes, but also our area rivers and streams. I particularly like this pattern up on Hosmer Lake, casting it tight to the tulies under a strike indicator or under a, um, an indicator fly. I also fish this quite a bit up at East Lake as a dropper fly under an indicator. And I've also had very good success on the upper Deschutes fooling those large brook trout that uh, migrate up from Crane Prairie during the summer. So give this fly a try. I think you'll like it and it will become a permanent part of your fly box. So before we begin, let me briefly cover the materials we'll be using on this pattern. I'll cover them in, in more detail as I approach uh, each material's tie-in point to the So let's begin by introducing the first couple of materials. For a hook, I'm using a Firehole 718, and this is in a size 16. It's a slightly curved competition barbless hook that I like a lot for many of my beadhead nymphs. For the thread, I'm using Ultra uh, 140 denier in olive. For the bead on this fly, I'm using a 2.7 millimeter or 764 brass bead in gold. I like a brass bead versus tungsten when I'm fishing in lakes and I don't want it to get down unnaturally. Uh, if I'm fishing rivers I might use a similar size tungsten bead to get down quickly. So I'll begin by tying on my thread right at the back of the bead to go ahead and, and tighten that bead into the eye of the hook and I'll add a few wraps right there and uh, go ahead and tie back to the midpoint of the hook. For the rib I'm using an ultra wire in gold and this is sized small. Uh, this is adding strength and durability to the pheasant tail and also to the peacock up in the thorax. For the abdomen and wing case on this pattern, I'm going to use a pheasant tail that has been dyed red. I really like the red color, especially in fishing many of our lakes, but also in streams. From here, I'll uh, select out probably seven or eight fibers off my pheasant tail and I'll tie that in um, to create the tail with uh, the tail length about half the body of this fly. And then I'll follow that up with uh, tying in my gold wire. For the flashback, I'm using a Mirage Tinsel, and this is a uh, size large. 
and then I'm going to follow that on by tying in my Mirage uh, tinsel. And I'm going to tie that in um, facing backwards. Ultimately, this will get folded all the way over to the head, but we'll reserve it for now. And now I'll tie on um, red pheasant tail to ultimately wind onto the body and up to the uh, back of the thorax position. So I'll tie that off at the back of the thorax and wind my thread to up near the bead um, over that pheasant tail and then I'm going to fold it backwards. Ultimately this is being reserved for the wing case. For the thorax on this pattern I'm using a couple of barbs off a peacock tail feather. From here, I'm going to go ahead and attach a couple of um, peacock curl uh, that I've cut off a, f a uh, peacock tail feather, and I'll wind those forward up through the thorax position. And then I'll follow that up by folding my wing case of the reserve pheasant tail over the uh, peacock. So once I've clipped off the excess pheasant tail, I'm going to go ahead and fold my Mirage tinsel all the way up to the head of this pattern and tie that off and secure it with a wrap uh, couple wraps over it and one wrap in front and then I'll clip off the excess. And I'll follow that up by wrapping my ribbing wire over the uh, abdomen of this fly with about four wraps and then I'll take one wrap of that ribbing wire right over the thorax and peacock and tie that off at the head position. So the last material to tie in is for the legs. And I've taken a Hungarian partridge um, barred feather and I've uh, cleared off the fluff at the back end and then I've cut out the tip to create a V like you see on the video. And I'll go ahead and line that up in the position I want it and tie it on with just a couple of wraps and trim off the excess. So let me whip finish this to um, finish off the tying part of the fly. And then I'm going to go ahead and put just a drop of uh, UV resin over the top of the wing case and coat that and cure it with my uh, light. I generally do not put UV resin over the entire uh, abdomen of the fly as well, although you can. I just like the looks of it a little bit better uh, just over the thorax position. So let me rotate this around in the vise so you can see all sides of the flashback red pheasant tail.
So that has been your Sun River Angler's Fly Tying Corner for this month. I hope you'll give the flashback red pheasant tail a try. It's been a good fly for me, particularly up on Hosmer, up on East Lake, and on the upper Deschutes. If you like what you see, please subscribe to this page and follow us on Facebook at Sun River Anglers. Thanks for watching.